and welcome to ASFN 2017 and I hope you guys are as excited about the new series as what I am. We'll be targeting a whole bunch of new species and areas and uh, as promised I'm going to run you guys through the setup I use for spinning the 11 foot 6 setup with the 4000 reels. Um, just run you through how to spool up the reels with braid and some other accessories um, that you'll obviously need to do this type of fishing. Now I've got the spoons here, I've got the leaders, I've got um, the braids I'm going to use for the two reels and then the rod here. Now I'm going to start off with just spooling up the reels with some braid. Questions we've received in the past, um, very simple and another thing I want to encourage all of you, no question is a stupid question. In fishing, the quicker you want to grow and the quicker you want to get results, uh, depends on how many questions you ask and not being too shy to ask a question. All right. So first, I'm going to start with the Saltist 4000. Very nice reel this. This is a superior reel on the market. Um, this is the new model that came out um, recently. And uh, a very sexy looking reel. Nice and rugged looking. Now with this, I'm very confident to target most species. Um, getting from the shore on, on spinning. Up to 30 kilos, 40 kilos. I'll target with this and I'll take them on. It depends on obviously, that's why I'm putting the 30 pound braid on. Um, that allows me to pull harder because the drag allows me to pull harder. This has got a very uh, strong or good drag on it. And that comes with basically the price class we shop in. Unfortunately, that's how anything works in life. So I'll spool this with 30 pound. That allows me when I hook those bigger fish to actually bully them back. Now the rod will most definitely allow it to really bully fish up to 30, well, even up to 30 kilos. Some people might not agree, agree with me, but I've caught some GTs up to 37 kilos on 10 foot rods. And uh, these rods we get today can pull that hard, especially a rod like this. Now this is the XL salt water, extra heavy, fast spinning. The XHFS1163. And uh, that should be available in most of your tackle stores right now. Okay, now let's start off. Um, in the past, we used to spool reels by using the arbor knot. When it comes to braid, we're definitely not going to do that. Years back when we started fishing braid, there was a problem that if your knot didn't grip properly on your spool, all the braid on your spool starts spinning, and that is a serious problem. But what they've done now, like you'll see in this case, is they've put in this little rubber on the bottom here, which is fixed. It can't spin. So with a braid going over that, in any case, prevents that. But I've got a way of making a knot on here that just gives me confidence and the fact that it will never spin. Some guys also use a bit of super glue after making the knot to, to glue the braid onto the spool. I don't even do that anymore. The knot I use, I feel is sufficient. Okay, now first things first, let's get the, the little plastic off. Okay, there we go. A braid scissor is essential for this type of fishing. In your power angling bag uh, for spinning, you need a little braid scissor. With that, I don't even use a side cutter in the bag. There's no need to, but you can take it just for backup. All right. Okay, that's on. Now look at what they've done with the latest uh, technology and tackle. Fishing braid, it's essential that everything is lined up nicely. So you can see they've, they've angled this reel to actually line up with the eyes. So when your, your braid leaves the spool, it goes straight through the eyes. That just minimizes the friction. And that sometimes plays a role. Why? Uh, for instance, let's use an example of putting a very big reel on here. You're going to have a very direct angle and then it straightens out in the rod. With the right size reel for the rod, that will automatically line up straight through your eye or line up very close to being lined up to minimize the friction for casting. Also, it minimizes the, the wind knots, which becomes a problem sometimes with, with casting with braid. We'll run you guys through some tips on that to prevent wind knots altogether. Okay, I'm going to have to put the, the next section on just to have an eye to work with. Just line it more, more or less. All right, now first things first, look at which side the reel turns. And I'll show you why now for the knot I'm going to use. All right, I've put it through the first eye there so we can get going. 
Now with the smaller reels, I'm not too too phased about how tight I put the, the braid on, but you do try and put it fairly tight. All right, now to start this knot, I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna use a double granny knot. One, two, through itself, like that, and form that loop. Wetting it is a good habit with all knots, Pull the tag, cut the tag off, now we've got this little loop. Now through that loop you pull the braid through itself and you've got a slip knot on this. Okay, now very important with this, that your loop needs to point in the direction your reel's turning. So otherwise it will slip on itself, now it will pull tight. got a re reverse action. As you can see there, it pulls tight on itself. But before I pull it tight, I take a bit of extra braid out of the loop. And I've got very limited space to work here. And just turn it around as well. Just four or five times should do it and that basically secures this knot not to slip whatsoever. In fact it can't slip. It's also got that rubber. You can make sure it's over the rubber if you want but all the line you're going to put on now will be over the rubber. And then by using your finger or a wet cloth you can hold this fairly tight and then start spooling it off. Now, with the spool, a lot of people believe that if you put the spool down like this and you spin it off, you need to turn it around every now and again to prevent the, the winding up of your braid and causing wind knots. You can do that, or you can spool it off that it actually spins. Now, I'm gonna use Caroline quickly. If she can hold it for me, then we'll spin it off. And then just secure this with a, with a cloth both sides like that, you'll hold it like that to put a little bit of pressure on you. This, you can determine how much pressure you want to put on this and uh, the person reeling up the braid will just carry on reeling, person holding will just determine the pressure that goes on. So I'm going to hand this to carry. Okay, now this is nice and fast. It's not like putting backing on your, on your fixed spool reels. Well, that confirms it. The Saltus 4000 takes exactly 330 yards, 30 pound J braid, that is 300 meters of the 8 strand J braid. I'm excited to use this just for every quality it's got. Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple of ways to prevent wind knots. Now, the best, most effective way for me is to make sure I use a short leader. And when I say a short leader, the length of your drop from the from your tip eye. So if it's going to be a meter, meter and a half, that's the length of the leader you use. The thing you must make sure is that your leader knot does not go into the tip eye. And I want to explain that a bit, uh, a bit better. Your monofilament leaves the eyes of your of of your rod much slower than what braid would. So it's the braid is basically catching up to the mono. The mono has got more resistance through the eyes, so the braid catches up. In other words, more braids coming off at that speed and catching up with the mono, which then wraps around your eyes and causes wind knots where you snap off. So the easiest way to prevent that is make a shorter leader and tie it so that it, the, the, the eye or the knot doesn't go into the tip eye. Now the leaders I use is the fluorocarbon, the Siglon FC, in this case 0.55 for throwing the spoons, especially if off rocks. I'll go slightly thicker, um, I'll sometimes throw a 0.4, which uh, is much thinner than this. This is a 17 kilo, 38 pound 
but it's it's uh, more than adequate. This is what I use actually for Kuta and for all the game fishing off the boat as well as my leader. It's a 0 .50, 0 .55 and you can go all the way down to a 0 .40. So you keep a couple of these spools in your bag so you can quickly tie your leaders if need be. In essence, there's only really one leader knot when using braid to mono or braid to fluorocarbon and that's the FG knot, also referred to as the fine grain knot. But over the years I've used another knot which is similar to an Albright but instead of going three times, three times, I go four times, three times and I use a double braid. In other words, I make a loop like this to tie the knot. I'll show you that knot quickly. It's much quicker to tie and it hasn't failed me yet. But the FG knot gives you all the confidence in the world. So if you can tie that, make sure you rather use the FG knot. Now the knot I was referring to, uh, very similar to an Albright knot I've used for many years is folding your braid double then forming a loop in your leader using these thin leaders this works very effectively as well as remember that your leader knot's not going to go into your eyes or the guides of the rod you pull it through the loop like that then I wrap it around both the, the leader one two, three, four, and back three times. One, two, three. Now, this is very important. This now, that tag end, the double tag end of the braid, needs to go out the same direction as what I took it in through that loop. And then, as is important with any Albright knot, I'll just drag it a little bit down like that, not pull it tight. When you pull an Albright tight, you only pull the long end. So you wet it, and you pull the long end, watching it and guiding the braid nicely, and that will pack in like that. You pull that as tight as what you can before you pull the tag end. Then we pull the tag end and that's it. Now what's nice about this knot, this braid scissors aren't as sharp as anymore. Cut all the tags off. All right, now remember you use the double braid, so there's the, the other tag as well, the long one. I actually need a bit of braid scissor here. So basically there'll be three little tags on the braid. Now look at how small this knot is. A really, really small knot. Okay, now I'll make this leader basically just over a meter so I've got some space to, to, to play with and that's it Saltist is uh, rigged up ready to go okay now I'm just gonna run you guys quickly through some other things and obviously for spinning you need your spoons so I received all these spoons I had a couple of spoons like you can see in the back there I keep a bit of a collection some of them are there to remind me that us as anglers get caught as easily as what fish get caught, if not easier, with tackle, that is. In any case, I took this little, this you get from a stationery shop or a plastic shop, as little A5 folders, and what I've done, I've just put some cable ties in, locked them up to keep my spoons nice and tidy, and I put a good collection in here. I think there's 22 or 24 spoons in here. Now in this range of spoons, um, probably the most important ones are these anchovies, especially this time of the year. That's the Kingfisher anchovy spoons you, you get from most tackle stores and they're really inexpensive, very well priced. And then the Kingfisher Bonnie spoons, the needle spoons and then some other variety. I've got a couple of chase spoons which uh, Morkel gave me to test out. I'm quite excited about this range and actually taking it to the water. So this is what I'll be taking next week. 
I'm leaving in a couple of days to the north coast and see hopefully, hopefully there's some fish that will be taking spoon. I know there's some action on the south coast and far north coast, but um, going in that Belito area, I'm not sure if there's much fish around yet. But that's the, the little spoon box I use. Um, and that just goes into my backpack with some leader. Make sure you always have extra leader. Use your side cutters, braid scissors, some additional spoons, and then your jig heads and uh, uh, plastics if you're going to use that. That's what you chuck into the bag. Your measuring tape to measure your fish. Um, camera to take the photos, of course. Your cell phone or, or camera. Photos are essential. I mean, that's the only real thing we would like to keep about a fish. And uh, rather release the fish and keep a photo than keep the fish and release the photos. That kind of doesn't work for me. But um, also another thing I encourage, you know, for 12 years now, we've been very pro in releasing fish, looking after our fish stocks, especially the breeding stock, the bigger fish, rather release them. And we've put a lot of emphasis on that in catch and release and fishing for the future because we want our kids to be able to, to enjoy what we're enjoying as well. But having said that, if you've hooked a fish and it's damaged, you can see it's fatally damaged, don't release the fish. If you can eat it or gonna eat it, rather keep that fish and, and eat it. You're welcome to chuck it in the sea. It will be eaten by a shark or something. But um, that's normally when we, when we see a fish is fatally damaged, which does happen every now and again. Um, that's a fish easily, easily cooked and makes a great meal. And I'm sure it's gonna happen forward and uh, we'll be glad to show you guys how to, to cook some some nice recipes of fish and some seafood.